Chapter 12. As the final chords of Billy G's disastrous last song died away, there was complete silence. Gabriel was being led away by Hook, and Bremore was yelling at the vicar down a headphone headset. His words were all too audible to the shocked crowd standing by the stage. To think I trusted you, you complete imbecile. Billy G's career has just been ruined by the cretin you insisted I take on tour. And from what I hear, you even personally told him how to do it. I shall murder you. Don't come backstage, because if you do, you'll be lucky to walk out alive. And still, the hall was silent, as if the whole audience was shocked. It was one of those moments when the cliché of time standing still seemed almost real. We were all hanging in suspended animation, waiting for something to happen. And then it did. The audience erupted into the loudest cheer of the evening. Billy G and the band, who'd been standing like statues at the end of the song, moved to the front of the stage and, and bowed and, and waved to the audience as if nothing had happened. They couldn't have looked happier and the audience were ecstatic. The applause went on and on and Billy G bowed and, and waved to all parts of the theatre, flicking her tongue stud and throwing them sweaty towels, water bottles and anything else she could find before the lights finally went down and she moved off to the safety of the lift and the back stage dressing rooms. The house lights went up in the hall and at the same time I noticed that the light was flashing on the monitor engineer's headset. He relayed a message to Bremore. That was the vicar. He says that he personally wishes to address all the media and other worthies that you have assembled backstage. He will be in the backstage bar in five minutes. No doubt he wishes to tell them that it was his fault and that Billy G is innocent, said Bremore, who was still raging. It won't cut any water. After that display, nothing will persuade them that she wasn't trying to lip sync. But I'm happy to let him take the heat. He and his assistant deserve to roast in hell. And with that, he headed round the back of the stage toward the lift, leaving me on my gantry frozen to the spot. And I think I would have stayed there forever had not the vicar appeared at the foot of the ladder a minute or two later and called me down. Most of the partygoers had dispersed from the side of the stage in search of the bar. Come along, my dear punk. The best part of the evening is upon us and we must not miss our cue. He seemed impossibly jovial. I do hope that Bremore has not said anything unfortunate to you, he went on. He really can get very hot under the collar. Well, fairly justifiably I cut in. From his point of view, I suppose yes but there is always more than one point of view. Come along, I do hate to be late. He led me round the back of the stage. Have I not told you of the Spanish writer, Una Muno? This hardly seemed like a time for philosophy. He described your four faces, the one you see in the mirror, the one other people see, the one you think other people see, and finally, the one that God sees. There is no one version of the truth. Try telling that to Bremore, I thought, as we entered the lift and headed up to the backstage bar, which was on the floor above the dressing rooms. Well, what other ways of seeing it are there? Perhaps we had better find out, he mused, as the door lift opened and we make, walked into the passageway filled with people all pressing in the same direction. The backstage bar was filling fast with all the worthies who'd been given the chance to meet and greet the band. But thankfully, the band themselves had not yet arrived. There'd be at least 10 minutes showering and changing before putting in an appearance. I spotted Bremore lurking near a side door, pushing away anyone that came near him. The vicar found an empty spot near the corner of the room, put his hands behind his back and stepped patiently into the noisy crowd, waiting for silence. <laughs> Fat chance, I thought. If you want to talk to these people, you're going to have to jump up onto one of those tables, clap your hands above your head and shout for silence. I was, as ever, completely wrong. The vicar's presence seemed to weigh on the room, and one by one, the people turned around to look at him until the general murmur of shh became louder than the talking and the place fell silent. A few people tried to take a photograph. The vicar stared at them as if he were, they were trying to steal his soul and, and shook his head, no. Still, he had not said a word. The only noise left in the room was that of the cash register at the bar. If you please, the vicar said, looking at the barman, and even that fell silent. The vicar then hung his head and made us wait for what must have been at least a minute. Good, he said finally, raising his head and smiling at the crowd. Ladles and gentle spoons, as my father might have said, I do not have the pleasure of knowing very many of you, and I would not be so presumptuous as to assume that you should know me. Let me introduce myself. I am the vicar. He bowed his head as he said this. And for my sins, I was the sound engineer tonight. It was a very polite Japanese style applause. You are too kind. Unfortunately, Richard the Bee 
Billy Dee's manager does not share your opinion of my abilities. I think it would be fair to say that he would describe tonight's concert as an unmitigated disaster. Too right, shouted an American voice from the back. The sooner Billy G stops pretending to be a singer, the better. That broad's a goddamn embarrassment. There was a large intake of breath around the room as the directness of the comment, which, no doubt, mirrored what most people were thinking, but would never dare to say. I can see that you, sir, are not Japanese. Might I ask what brought you here and where you were during the concert? Yes, sir. I flew all the way here at Richard's specific request and watched the show from the side of the stage, not 10 yards away from that girl. I know what I saw, and that last number was one of the worst performances I've ever had the misfortune to witness. Just because her fans gave her a standing ovation don't make the facts any prettier. There were some general murmurs of agreement. I may be a friend of Richard's, he went on, but I write it how I see it. I've bought a few of your records in my time, but there ain't no sweet talking from no goddamn vicar gonna make me change my mind, he said forcefully. Thank you, the vicar said, still smiling at him, completely unfazed by his comments. And I very much hope that you will give maximum publicity to what happened here tonight. I have no desire to compromise your journalistic integrity. Unfortunately, I thought, if ever there was a time for a large bribe, this was it. But first, the vicar continued, how many other people here were backstage? Don't be shy. In England, we are trained to raise our hand at the drop of a hat, to catch a bus, to buy an antique, to go to the tickler. A few hands started to go up, and by the end, there must have been a total of about 20. Well, I am sure it will surprise those of you who are backstage to learn that Billy G's performance of the last number was, in fact, immaculate. The American journalist let out a loud, disbelieving hmm sound. Is there anyone here who saw the concert in the hall or on TV who would like to tell these gentlemen how well Billy G sung the last number. Billy G sang absolutely excellent, cut in a Japanese voice. Hear, hear, brilliant, chorused some other people before the whole room burst into applause. Well, I know what I heard, shouted Bremore from the side of the room. I know you have a way with words and you can harangue a crowd, but none of it covers up for your gross incompetence or the size of the lawsuit. Again, there was a sharp intake of breath. We know what we heard, he repeated, as if spelling out the words. Yes, perhaps I had better explain what you did here, said the vicar, smiling. But first, we had better allow all these fine people to return to their drinks. The cash register had already begun to ring. Perhaps everyone who was backstage would like to join me in that side room over there, including you, sir, he bowed to the American journalist, and you, Richard the Bee, manager and erstwhile publishing thief. He smiled across at Bremore, who looked as if he was ready to burst a blood vessel. I could not understand how the vicar could remain as arrogant and confident as ever. That boy's not Chronicle the second. The absurd nonsense of the orange eyebrow. Chapter one. 9 a.m. Saturday, the 23rd of January, Heathrow Airport. I told them how we caught the man responsible for persecuting Billy G. But it was an ingenious sting, you know. I cut in. One that went horribly wrong. No young lady. One which went wonderfully right. Oh,